and welcome along to the Racing Postcast presented to you by the Racing Post Members Club with David Jennings, Robbie Wilders and Johnny Pearson. And ladies and gentlemen, it is back, baby. Yes, Cheltenham is back for the showcase meeting and we're going to be previewing four races at the Cotswolds on Saturday. And we have a jam-packed show because in the second half of the show, we're going to be previewing races at Newbury and Doncaster, where the final group one of the domestic season is, of course, the Cameco Futurity Trophy Stakes. That's a tongue twister, which is off at 2.45 at Doncaster on Saturday. But we have to start with the jumps. Of course we do. It's back at Chetlam. So we're going to kick off with the 115. And it is the epic value at William Hill Handicap Chase and the best prices in the industry at the time of recording are Haddock's De Zobo is 3 to 1 favourite, Red Rookie is 11 to 2, Guy is 15 to 2, Triple Trade is 9 to 1, it is 10 to 1 before midnight, 10 to 1 not long till May, and 12 to 1 bar. And I have to kick off with the man who is banging form, although I say banging form, Robbie Wilders, is there any part of the year when you have been out of form? Because you've had a terrific 2023. Uh, not piling any pressure on you in particular for tomorrow, but you have had a very good year. So long may it continue. Yeah, that's nice of you to say, DJ. Uh, it's been a good year. Um, do like the anti-post game particularly. And um, I am extremely sweet on one in this. Uh, Haddock oh, yes. Um, oh, yes, baby. You know what? I, I, I thought about putting him up for the champion chase at 50 to 1 earlier in the week. Um, the, then, you so, be... then, then, then you sobered up. Yeah, exactly. That that felt potentially a bit far-fetched, but he kind of reminds me a little bit of Editor de Geet for the uh, Gary Moore stable last year. He just goes along from the front. He's a brilliant jumper. He's got a, a really big engine. I quite fancied him to actually give John Bon a real uh, race at Warwick in the Kingmaker. He didn't run that day. Uh, so there was some sort of issue. But we've not seen him since. He's just a rapid improver. He put up an RPR of uh, 154 in a really hot handicap at Warwick on his last start. Uh, the three horses he beat that day all won next time. That's really good form. I think he's definitely a lot better than 146, and I can't see why Cheltenham isn't going to suit him. He's got the perfect sort of racing style for it. Bold jumping, I think he's going to take a lot of pegging back. And, uh, well, if I think he, he could be running the champion chase, he really should be winning this off 146. And he's 3-1 to one as well, Robbie. I think that's probably a little bit of value. I could see this going off maybe twos or nine to four. I think threes is on the big side. I'm a bit like you at Warwick. I was blown away. Third time Lucky was in the race and third time Lucky did what third time Lucky does and, and travels up and just doesn't find as much as expected. But he was pretty good that day. Yeah, he's brilliant. Yeah, no, I don't think he's really going to mind what the ground does either. We, I, I'd say it's probably going to be on the quicker side. He's got form on heavy. He's got form on good. I just think he's a very well handicapped horse and uh, there should be a hell of a lot more to come this season. Right, Johnny Pearson, don't do anything stupid. Keep it simple. Three votes for Haddock's to Zobo, I presume. I think... Haddock's Zobo is most likely winner, but I think there's a bit of value in the in the place market with Guy for Nigel Twist and Davis. His horses are running very, very well as they typically do at the start of the season, but I feel they're arguably running even better than they normally would for this time of year. And you know he's won last time out of the front well, pretty impressively. He's he's an eight year old, but he's likely still improving, and there's more to come. And you know you'd be, I'd be very disappointed if he wasn't filling the places. Mm. And just a note on the Nigel Twist and Davis team. He's had four winners in the last fortnight from only 12 runners, OK? He's had two seconds and a third as well before racing on Thursday when we're, when we're filming this. But I just thought Kessel Valley at, at Hereford the other day, like, it just proved that the stable are just banging for him because pinged out, made all, just looked full of himself. And uh, I, think, I think you're right. I think now is the time to catch the Twist and Davis stable. But I do think I has plenty on his plate with Haddock's to Zobo. So it's two votes for Haddock's to Zobo from myself and Robbie Wilders, who is very early giving away his nap of the whole weekend. And it is Guy in each way play for Johnny Pearson in the 115. Moving on to the 150, and this is always an informative event at Cheltenham. It is the Masterson's Holdings Hurdle. And Blue King Doro is six to four favourite. Spirit Danu, the winning machine from last season for Gary and Jamie Moore is two to one. Uh, Boz Guilher is 10 to 1. Punta del Este is 10 to 1. A very interesting individual. Let's give you a whole marker for this race. Mr. McKay is 14 to 1. Chaos Control is 20 to 1. Uh, Gilla, Gilla Gun is Gilla Gong. Gilla Gong. Gilla, how am I going with that, uh, Robbie? Gilla, Gilla Jong. Yeah. I mean, these are all novice hurlers. I don't know loads about these horses, to be honest, but I think that sounds about right, yeah. Which version of the 20 I tried there was right? I'll go for the first one. <laughs> okay, Gilla Jong. 
Jill and John, which is completely wrong, and I'm sure Simon Holt or somebody tomorrow will correct me. And Bojack is 33 to 1. Boy, am I regretting doing a full show of the betting now. Uh, but as I said, this is always an informative race over the years. And um, Pied Piper won it last year. I like to move it won it the year before that. And even going back to So Royal in 2016. And Tiger Roll, would you believe, the legend won it in 2014. So it's an always an informative race. According to the market, Johnny Pearson, it's a two horse race between Blue King Doro. And Spirit Danu. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. You'll see you had Blue King Doro win at 50 to 1 back at Ascot in April. And the second that day, Affidil, from the, from the same stable in his favour, he actually runs in the first at Cheltenham tomorrow. If he goes and, goes and wins that race, it'll obviously then become, I, I can really see the price of Blue King Doro shortening. However, it's, you know, you've got Gary Moore horse, again, hasn't run since April, same as Paul Nichols' horse, but been in terrific form. However, I do think it'll be left a little a little bit short of Paul Nichols, and I think Blue King Doro should win the race. Beautiful. Robbie, 150, Cheltenham, what do you like? Yeah, like you say, DJ, it's an excellent race, the role of honour. There's so many so many big names over the years have won it. Um, it doesn't look as deep this year uh, as the market suggests. It's a, t- it's a two-horse race on rating, certainly, unless something really uh, improves by miles. Uh, Blue King Doru is £9 ahead of Spirit Danu, but I'd be a little bit concerned that the only time he ran at Cheltenham, he's pulled up as a 6-4 to favourite. Um, I know the ground was certainly quicker than it's probably going to be on Saturday, but that would probably concern me. I thought Spirit Danu's done very little wrong, to be honest. Um, he's unlucky to have not won all five starts for Gary Moore. Um, he could be, well, I'd, but essentially, I don't really know. But if I was going to have one bet, it'd probably be Spirit Danu, just about. Okay, interesting. One to keep an eye on in the market, certainly, is Punta del Este, owned by Darren Yates, trained by Dan Skelton. I did a preview, chat and preview with Dan Skelton last March. And he seemed to think this was a proper horse for the future when he got deep ground. Now, he's not going to get deep ground here, I don't think. But I do think he's a horse, potentially, if there is money from the market and the ground is right on the slow side, he is interesting here. He's a lot better than his rating, but expect this shrewd Dan Skelton to find a suitable opportunity for Punta del Este, who's only rated 121. He's won for your notebooks for the season ahead. Moving on to the 225 at Cheltenham, the epic jump season at William Hill Handicap Chase. And this is a corker, ladies and gentlemen. Quick draw for Nicky Henderson and Nico de Boinville is six to one favourite. Lord Accord is seven to one. Under supervision is fifteen to two. Twig nine to one. Am I right? Ten to one. Kenodo Quitu is eleven to one. Brief times twelve to one. And it is sixteen to one. Bar kick us off, Robbie Wilders. Yeah, this is a this is a really good race. I, I actually wanted to ask you about Am I Right because he was going to be one of he was even one of my big two selections. Um, I mean, have you heard anything about Amar Wright this season? He was quite a good novice last year, wasn't he? Well, it's it's interesting you do mention that, Robbie, because before the show, we had to submit our naps for the day because uh, Dave Lowe, who's editing the show today, he wanted to get a head start, you know, always thinking ahead of the game. And I submitted Am I Right? Because I think he's potentially very well handicapped, even though he's run off mark of 142, which is slightly higher than his Irish mark. This is a horse we haven't seen the best of yet, Robbie. I really fancy him in the Irish National. It's hard to believe he started 11-2 favour for the Irish Grand National. And do you know what? In the early part of the race, I was actually delighted. But he kind of made a mistake at halfway and then re- didn't really get into it. And uh, I'd say we didn't see the best of him. Like, you go through some of his form and it's it's quite interesting. I thought the day against Gallag- Gayard de Manil in the grade one at, at Leperson, I thought he was travelling beautifully before uh, he got rid of uh, Rachel Blackmore. If you remember, that was a race. Remember, I think it was was this, um, Jack Kennedy was riding Three Stripe Life and Rachel was on Am I Right and the clashed in the air and Am I Right had no chance of staying on. But uh, I do think the run against the Devils coachman, Ramie was in that race, Chemical Energy. I thought that was a good run from Am I Right as well. It's an interesting piece of placement from Henry de Bromwell, but this is surely like 150 rated horse run off 142. I think he's one of the best bets of the day, Robbie. Yeah, I totally get it. Um, I mean, 142, even though it's higher than his Irish mark, you'd have to say he's quite well treated. He's been running a lot of good races, a lot of better races than this. It's just if he's ready, um, I'll probably have a, a save on him. But my main selection, the other gentleman here also likes, uh, Lord Accord. Uh, he won this really well last year off a pound higher. Um, it's very similar prep to last season. He ran in a hurdle race at Warwick. That would have blown away the cobwebs. Uh, that was over an insufficient trip. He's a, he's a proper free miler. He's back up in distance now. But he's essentially also been running in much better races than this. He's been running in Scottish Nationals, Kim Muir's. He's even been running in uh, he ran the Cleve Hurdle uh, 
behind gold tweet as well and the Labrooks, uh, the Coral Gold Cup, sorry. And I just think that this is the time of year to catch him. He's now fallen back to the mark, well, very similar mark to what he won off last year. And um, I think for, for me, Lord Accord and Am I Right are the big two there. But what I did just you, stayed What did you think of the run at Warwick from Lord Accord? I know it was only it was his first run since April, but I was a little bit disappointed. I was expecting a bit more. Like he's running off 127 in a hurdle race and he was yeah. beating 16 lengths. Yeah, I see what you mean. I mean, it's, it's just not his ideal sort of discipline. I thought he ran quite a similar race uh, in his prep last year. So I'm, I'm not overly concerned by that. This is more his, his sort of test. So uh, with the ground in his in his favour, I think he could be the answer. OK, so Lord Accord could be the answer for Robbie Wilders. And he has also given away Johnny Pearson's tip as well. Because, Johnny, you are oh so sweet on Lord Accord. And you even made me change my nap. So make your case for Lord Accord in 60 seconds, please. And make it good. I mean, Robbie's near enough said everything there is to say about the horse. And, if, and you know, you were speaking about the prep and being a bit disappointed by him over hurdles. But you see countless chasers go back hurdling off a lower mark and it just doesn't quite click for them, whether they're used to a slower pace of racing or whatever else. So I wouldn't be concerned about that. You know, it's just getting, blowing the cobwebs off more than anything. And he should be should be fit for this race as he was last year when he came into it off a prep run. Am I right? I understand what you're saying. I completely agree with you. There. Okay, you're the Irish handicapper. You are the man with your finger on the pulse in Ireland. So tell me why you don't fancy Am I Right here? It's, it's it's just not you know he's pulled up in April not been seen since yes he won first time out last year and Henry de Bromhead can obviously get them ready first time out and he should be ready first time out otherwise you wouldn't come over and make the trip but I just think there's a, there's still a few question marks there whereas Lord Accord you you, sh, you know what you're getting and he's gonna he's running off one pound higher than last year well handicapped to win the race again and he's proven it whereas am I right still needs to prove it and you're going off potential rather than what is actually achieved so far okay well debated Johnny well done okay so we have two votes for Lord Accord and I am on my own with am I right in the 225 at Cheltenham it's a cracking staying handicap chase the final race at Cheltenham we're going to preview is the three o'clock it is the Pretemps Network handicap hurdle and it sees an Irish invasion here because Bugs Moran for Noel Mead and Keith Donahue, who's having a terrific season, is seven to one, best price in the industry favourite. We'll have one is eight to one for Willie Mullins and Paul Town. And Hugo Hugo's new horse, who won plenty of races last season, is ten to one. Highland is ten to one. It is a twelve to one bar. So Johnny Pearson, plenty of Irish contenders here. Do any of them catch your eye? Moon over Clune has got my eye here. He's got James James Smith claiming seven pounds. He's been in really good form sort of through the summer. He's going to be fit for the race. Well, he's a little bit disappointing at Punchestown last time. I think the step up to three miles here will really suit him. And I think he could be still ahead of his handicap mark for all, for all he didn't produce it last time out. OK, Robbie, before I come to you, I fancy one here. I fancy we'll have one for Willie Mullins and Paul Towner. Now, Willie doesn't tend to do particularly well at Cheltenham before the festival and his record isn't great before the festival but just what we'll have one um he must have been spectacularly well handicapped in ireland because the day patrick mullins rode him at galway he was backed into 13 to 8 favors he literally went widest of all the whole way like he gave an absolute stones of a right he'd admitted himself afterwards i love patrick but this was not his finest hour um he was only beaten four and a half lengths in the end i said to myself whoa God, if, if this horse is well handicapped when things go hard in the plan, he didn't jump particularly well that day. Then he came out in a handicap hurdle later in the week in Galway, over two miles, and he jumped curly again, but he wasn't beaten that far. He was only beaten six lengths. Stepping up in trip at uh, Killarney next time, despite jumping poorly and and not really doing things right, because like he was he was he was clear early on in the home straight, he got to the front very early. Like he, he was value for more than the win a margin, I thought, because he hung up the straight. I think this horse is crying out for a step up to three miles. I think when they are going a step slower and he's in his comfort zone, I think that's really going to suit him. I know he's up to a mark of 129 in England, which is which is quite high. Uh, but I think I think this horse is crying out for three miles. I think it's interesting that he runs here. And uh, I just wonder, could he run here, potentially win, and that'll get him into the race in March? Um, I'm a big fan of We'll Have One. Robbie, what do you like at the three o'clock? Yeah, interesting case, mate. Um, I was drawn to Bashful Boy at the start of the week, uh, and I still am. Um, now, this horse, on his last start, he was fourth in the Cesaro 
the, uh, let me start again. Um, go for it. Cesarowicz. 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 <laughs> Cesarowicz. Um, Cesarowicz. Yeah, fourth in Say that. ten times for your homework. He's fourth in that on soft ground. Um, staying on fourth as well. He's, he started the trip very well. But crucially, over hurdles, he's never run over a trip this far. So I think now he's very much race fit. He's in form. Quite a few of these are coming off long breaks. We don't know if they're going to be ready. We know he's going to be ready. And according to Jockey Book, he's the pick of David Pipe's challenge. So I could see him going really well uh, on this first step up and trip over hurdles. Absolutely, ran a cracker into Cesarowicz. 16 to 1. Robbie Wilders with a big one. 16 to 1 bashful boy for Robbie. I'm at Wheel Have One at 8 to 1. And if I remember correctly, uh, Johnny, you're with Moon over Clune for Matty Smith and James Smith. Also 16 to 1 shots. So two 16 to 1 shots and an 8 to 1 shot in the 3 o'clock at Cheltenham. So those are the four races we're previewing at Cheltenham. But join us after the break where we'll be getting stuck in to all the flat action on Saturday. Do you want over £500 in free bets? Well, the best free bet offers are now all in one place. Head to racingpost.com forward slash free bets where you can find all the offers from your favourite bookmakers. Click the link in the description to find out more. Yes, welcome back to the Racing Postcast presented to you by the Racing Post Members Club with David Jennings, Johnny Pearson and Robbie Wilders. We've got stuck into Cheltenham. Now we have to get stuck in to flat action at Newbury and Doncaster. And we're starting very early, Robbie. Early to bed, Friday night now. No late drinks, okay? Because the 12.55 at Newbury is the Beth Victor Horace Hill Stakes. It's a group three, and currently your 11 to 4 favourite is Blue Lemons for Richard Han and Sean Levy. Witness Stand is 7 to 2. Son of Man is 9 to 2. Change for Good is 7 to 1. And it is 9 to 1 bar. It's before lunch, Robbie. Uh, kick us off with a winner at Newbury. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll probably watch some Chelsea Brentford at that time. It's so early. Um, it is a very hard race for me, this one, DJ. Um, you, we haven't got much form to go off, and it's going to be very hard work for these juveniles. We've got a couple of soft ground winners here. Um, I think the one who took my eye on the most was Finbar Fury. Um, now, there's another horse in this field, the the horse 10, Bob Tony. They both won different divisions of a Salisbury novice last time out on soft ground. Uh, now, this horse, Finbar Fury, ran it in over a second quicker time. I think he's quite a useful horse. He's, it's, it's strange, though. He's since moved from Clive Cox to Jane Chapel Hyam, but I'm not necessarily seeing that as a negative. He's changed ownership. Um, but, I mean, just with that form on soft ground, uh, Kodiak's like it, uh, like it soft, I always, I always think. And uh, he's a much bigger price than a lot of these, so he'd be the way I was going. But it's, it's, quite, it's one to tread carefully, out, I think. Yeah, 180,000 guineas he changed hands for the Tats mm. Autumn. Horses in training sale earlier on this week. 180 grand. They could get, uh, potentially, they could get, oh, only 28,000 of that back here. <laughs> I was building up for a big one there. They're going to get... They're going to get all their half their money back, but there's only 28 uh, grand to the winner here. Uh, bloody British prize money. Anyway, so it is Finbar Fury for Robbie Wilders, and that is good research, Robbie, uh, telling our viewers that the time of the race that Finbar Fury won at uh, Salisbury was much quicker than the other division. Uh, Johnny, what do you like in the Open at Newbury? Uh, like Robbie said, you know, it's very, very little form to go off, and their two year olds will improve at varying rates and handle the conditions some a lot better than others. But the one that I'm going to go with is one that's recorded the best race in post rating, according to, to my, my colleague and handicapper, Matt Gardner. And that is Witness Stand. It was a very good second at Newmarket last time out. And that's, that, for me, is the best piece of form in the race and the one they, they need to beat. You can say, look back to Yarmouth and say it was disappointing, went behind Son of Man. But, you know, he's, he's gone and proven since then but that was just a blip and he's an improving horse with more form than most of them. And I don't see any well, more form than all of them, actually, in fact. And I don't see any reason why he's not going to finish with with his head in front of the line. Excellent. So witness Dan currently a four to one shot for Johnny Pearson. Finbar Fury for Robbie Wilders. If the ground was anyway decent, I would be very keen on change for good who um, I thought won nicely at the line at Epsom on his debut and, and was a little bit unlucky. I know he was a 50-1 shot, shot last time 
um, behind um, Alian Abbey, who, who franked the form obviously in the Dewhurst, and, and Eben Shadad, who also franked the form in the Dewhurst. But I thought he was a little bit unlucky not to finish a bit closer, but he's only raced and good to firm twice. So I don't know how he's going to handle the ground. His half brother didn't win on any sort of slow ground. So I'd be worried about the ground for change for good. But if it did happen to dry up, uh, I think change for good would be very interesting indeed. That is the 12.55 at Newbury. Moving on to the 1.30, it is the Bet Victor St. Simon Stakes. It's another group three. And the Mudlark himself, unbeaten this season, three from three. Hamish is currently our six to four favourite for William Haggis and Tom Marquand. Al Karem, who's chasing a hat trick for Carol Burke and Clifford Lee, is five to one. White Birch, the Irish Raider from the John Murphy Yard, who won earlier on in the season at Leperstown in the Derby trial. A bit of a forgotten horse is currently 11 to two, eight to one salt bay, and it is 10 to one bar. What do we make of White Birch here, Johnny? Frustrating is uh, one word that comes to mind. Uh, I th- I, it, it frustrated me when I saw him running at Leopardstown in September because I thought he was perfectly made for for the St Ledger. Every run he races in since since York, he's looked like he's wanted further, and one mile six would have been would have been optimal. He, I think, he'll handle conditions. I don't think he'll have issues on the soft ground, and the stamina w- will come into it. And that might, you know, that should play to his strength here. But I still think he's got a tough task beating Hamish, who's proven time and time again in these conditions that he's the horse to to beat. Yeah, Robbie, step. Robbie, is this just one of these scenarios where we try and find something to beat Hamish, you find something and you get all excited and then after the race you go, God, I'm an absolute idiot. Sure, this was blatantly obvious. Hamish was just going to win. He's rated 117. He has his conditions. He likes Newbury. Is it that obvious? Yeah, possibly, mate. I don't know. I mean, he was beating odds on in it last year by Max Vega is running again. Max Vega absolutely loves Newbury. Um, I'm not sure if he's quite the the horse he was last season, though, and he only raced the other day at Longchamp and disappointed. Um, the other time he ran on heavy ground, uh, we know he likes it soft, but he's been beating odds on twice the times he's run on heavy. I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to be heavy at Newbury. So that's one potential way so against him. Is, what, what you're saying, basically, is... The the ultimate mudlark doesn't really like a lot I'm, of mud. I'm saying the ultimate mudlark wants like seventy to eighty percent mud. Okay. <laughs> Possibly. I don't know. I'm just trying. I'm trying to find the way to take him on, and yeah. that's that's what I'm reaching for at the moment. Yeah. Um. I'd say this is a better race than last year as well. Uh. Al Kareem. I thought he showed a brilliant attitude to win the uh the Cumberland Lodge at Ascot last time being Israel's horse. I really like uh like Johnny chatting about White Birch. He's a, he's a good horse as well. Um, the horse I came down on was Salt Bay. Um, now, he ran to an RPI of 114 last time in Handicap Company. If he replicates that run, uh, you know, the likes of Hamish, Al Karim are going to have to give him nine pounds. That could be quite a tall order. This horse, on his second start last season, finished third in a Song Crew Group 1 on heavy ground. He obviously seems to like it really, really testing. I uh, thought it was a good run last time, over one mile, five and a half, five and a half furlongs at this course. I don't think he quite saw out the trip as well as not so sleepy did. He's back down to a mile four. He's like Hamish. He's only run three times this year. He's pretty fresh. And he's only run five times in life. So I think he could be capable of quite a lot better. Uh, and I'm not concerned that Hector Crouch is riding him over, uh, say, Rob Hornby riding Max Vega, the other Beckett horse. Hector Crouch always rides Salt Bay. Uh, I think at, at the prices, I think he's definitely worth considering. Beautiful. Eight to one shot Salt Bay. Am I right in saying... He was one of your selections in your anti-post column this week. You are correct, mate. Thanks for reading. We, we appreciate the support. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Well done. Uh, Salt Bay 8-1 to one for Robbie Wilders. And you did go for Hamish, I think, Johnny. Oh, right with Hamish, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going with Hamish. I think I'm similar to you, although I won't be back in Hamish, but I think he will probably win. Moving across to Donny, the 210. Move forward. It is the Cameco Futurity Trophy Stakes. It's a group one. It's worth 127,000 sterling to the winner. And we have a new favourite, ladies and gentlemen. Who would have thought it? Aidan O'Brien has won the race for I don't know how many times. I should have checked, but he won it last year with Augusta Rodin. He won it with Luxembourg the year before. He won it with Magna Grecia, Saxon Warrior. The name's Roll Off the Tongue. And he has Diego Velazquez here. But Diego Velazquez is not your favourite because he's on the drift out to 9-4 to four with one firm, Diego Velazquez. Ancient wisdom. You're pretty, I thought, I don't know what the guys thought, you're a pretty spectacular winner of the autumn stakes. Ancient wisdom is now your 7-4 to favourite, 13-8 to eight in most places. 
Dancing Gemini is 5-1. to one. God's Window, who I thought was quite impressive on his debut at Doncaster over this course and trip, uh, is currently a 7-1 to one shot. Devil's Point is 33-1. to one. And because it's a group one, we'll keep going. Red Hot Whisper is 40-1. to one. Battle Cry is 100-1. to one. And Dara Mile is 125-1. to one. Johnny Pearson, what wins the final group one of the season in Britain? Ancient Wisdom. Ancient Wisdom wins this for Charlie Appy and William Buick, who's very, very impressive at Newmarket last time. Shows he handles soft ground. And I think, you know, he's the one, he's the one they've got to beat. He's, he's put it in the best performance so far. And that's, that's that really. I mean, Dancing Gemini, I think, is the one likely, most likely to run him closest here. He's proven it on soft ground as well. Very impressive at Doncaster. And maybe slightly overlooked because, you know, Roger Till's not seen as as a trainer in the same echelons as Aidan O'Brien and Charlie Appleby. I think he's he's definitely overpriced. Diego Velazquez, not run on the ground, so you'd, you'd have question marks there. But, yeah, Ancient Wisdom's the, the most likely winner here. So Johnny Pearson has just ridiculed the man who's won the race 11 times. I checked it. 11 times. He's chasing a dozen Futurity Trophy winners, Aidan O'Brien. He doesn't fancy Diego Velazquez. He doesn't even think he's the main danger to Ancient Wisdom because that goes to Dancing Gemini. But Johnny is convinced that Ancient Wisdom is going to win the final group one in season in Britain. Are you, Robbie? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, Ancient Wisdom... Like you, you go back and watch the Newmarket race and read the quotes after Charlie Appleby was convinced that he was going to put him away after that. Um, maybe that's that's possibly a show of confidence he's come out of the race really well. But I thought he put in quite a big performance there. It's a quick enough turnaround, and the ground is going to be pretty desperate. Um, I mean Diego Velasquez, he, he did what he had to do at Leopardstown. I wasn't blown away by him. Uh, it's all about the ground with him. I mean he's a half brother, obviously, to Broom and Point Lonsdale. They've, they've been absolutely fine on on soft over the years. Uh, but the fact they've earmarked him for that race, this race for a long way out, suggests they probably think he's going to handle it. This is always run on pretty pretty terrible ground. Um, I don't know. I just thought Dancing Gemini was just completely rock solid. I mean, he, he has got the form on soft ground. He represents that same form line as Ancient Wisdom, the Pat Edry stakes at Ascot. That's, if, if basically, if you backed every horse that was running in that since, since that happened, you'd have made so much money. I mean, the horses that have come out, Rosalian won a, a group one since, so is Sunway. Dancing Gemini himself bolted up in a listed race. Al Yanabi won a group three. Ancient Wisdom won a group three. Al Musbat won a, a listed race. It's, it's excellent form. I think that form line is better than certainly Diego Velasquez is. Um, so my selection is going to be Dancing Gemini, a, a sort of scumbag each way. But I, I want to give a shout as well to Red Hot Whisper at about 40 to 1. Um, I, almost put this, I, I almost put this all up at the start of the week. Um, he represents that God's Whisper, uh, sorry, yeah, God's Window form line at Doncaster uh, over this course and distance. That was a really good maiden, I thought. Um, he was a little bit keen that day, but he, he does handle the soft ground. There's not much between these two horses, Red Hot Whisper and God's Window, but one's seven to one, one's about 40 to one. And Red Hot Whisper reposes off three pound better terms. So I could see him running really well, but my main selection will be Dance and Gemini. It's interesting you mentioned Red Hot Whisper. I, I, I thought he was really like catching on his debut. He kind of, veered coming out of the stalls and uh, flew. I, I thought he was really eye-catching the way he came home that day against Kingdom of Riches. So interesting shout out to Red Hot Whisper. No love whatsoever for Diego Velasquez, which I believe it is Dancing Gemini for Robbie and it is the favourite ancient wisdom for Johnny. Quiz question for you as both lads, okay? Two quiz questions, would you believe, okay? First of all, how many Group 1 or Grade 1 races has Charlie Appleby won in 2013? Ooh. Robbie Wilder, so your most, first answer. Most, mostly grade one. I'm going to go for four. Okay, you're going for four. No, okay, more four than, group more, or grade one. Johnny Pearson. There's more than Robbie four. Robbie Wilders is only going for four. What an idiot. How many I, are you I going mean, for? I mean, I think it's less than ten, but I'd say about eight. Eight, you're going right. for eight. The idiot is correct, would you believe? Four is the answer. Oh, sure. <laughs> yes, Back it is four. Are. Second it's question. Only... With three different horses, he has won the four group or grade ones. Can you name those three horses? Oh, You're uh, on a roll, Robbie. Come on. It's all the, it's all the US Master ones, of the isn't it? Seas. Right. Master of the Seas, correct. You've got one. Two more to get, boys. Come on. Nation, you can do wins it. Are these, wins are these rubbish American ones. Nation's, Nation's Pride. Pride has won two, correct. You're just waiting on one more. Come on. Uh, 
Think it's back true. to think back to when the spring festivals were on during jump race and were they were just over. You were still kind of in jumps mode, and there was a group one at Newbury Modern called games. the Lockins. Modern Games. Well done, Robbie. There you go. Modern Games is the other one who won the Lockins. So there you Cheers go. Right, DJ. Can, can you, you enjoy that little quiz? Can you make that a regular feature when when you're hosting? Nice, yeah, it's a nice little <laughs> nice little added oh, extra yeah. to have. Yeah. Well, well done. You like it because you did very well. Uh, sure moving on. Brain, yeah, moving on to the 245 at Doncaster, also live on ITV. It is the William Hill Prospect Prospect Stakes. It's a listed race, and Esquire is currently our three to one favorite. Ballymint boy, favorite earlier on the week, has been usurped. He's now 130. Al Shabab Storm is 11 to two. Moswat is eight to one, and it is nine to one bar. Robbie, we'll go to you here first. What wins the 245 at Doncaster? Please, yeah, I think um, Ballymint boy is the one to beat. I'm surprised he's not favorite. Um... I know the horse who's been backed into favouritism, Esquire. Uh, he produced quite an eye-catching run at York last time behind Pura Sangue. That was only his second start. Um, that was on soft ground, but this is going to be really, really hard work. I d- you look at his pedigree, he's not really bred for that. He's a half-brother to Audience, who's quite a fast ground horse. I know Audience does handle a little bit of cut, but I'm not so sure. I think Bally, Bally Mount Boy, uh, he needs a, a real slow surface. He couldn't show his best in the uh, in the, the bloody, what's his name, uh, Je- What's the, the, the French the, uh, group one? The Prigion Lagadere. Prigion Lagadere. I mean, obviously, no, the race. I've just went blank there. But, I mean, that, that was obviously on quick ground. Um, his one length seconds of Van Dijk over six uh, on soft ground is, you know, absolutely superb form in the context of this race. If he was meeting most of his horses in a handicap, he'd be giving them sort of 18, 16, 14 pound. So, I think you're getting quite a decent price about a horse who is battle hardened and he's going to go on the surface. So, Bally Mount Boy for me, DJ. Yeah, I think you're probably right, Robbie. Uh, Johnny, what do you like in the 245? Uh, I, I also came down on, on Ballymount Boy. Ooh, uh, the, unanimous the, agreement. The, the run at Goodwood really stands out, where he's just the length down behind Van Dijk. And that was on soft, in soft conditions as well. You can look at the long shot run last time out, and it says good to soft, but it, it was definitely quicker than good to soft that day over in France. And he clearly didn't handle it to best effect, as you also saw in the Acom stakes at, at York on the run before that, where... Yeah, he's run well, but on a softer surface, you'd definitely like to see the best of him, and that should really play to his strengths in this race, and he's the one they've got to beat. Brilliant. So we have uh, three votes for Ballymount Boy, the first unanimous verdict of the whole weekend in the 2.45 at Doncaster, and the final race we're going to preview in full on this week's racing postcast is the 3.20 at Doncaster. It is the William Hill Farewell Flat Handicap and Vintage Clarets is your 5-1 to one favourite. Manila Scouse is 13-2. to two. Desperate Hero, 7-1. to one. Glorious Angel, 7-1. to one. And it is 8-1 to one bar. Desperate Hero wins this race. Don't you dare tell me otherwise, Johnny Pearson. Uh, I, I didn't come down on Desperate Hero myself. I was... I remember being at the Qatar Goodwood Festival on the Saturday when it was abandoned. Saying Amber Amber, 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 Amber Gold. It's quite interesting up. that you went for like the Qatar Goodwood Festival <laughs> rather than like Glorious Goodwood or no, just Goodwood I'm, there. Are you no. on? A, are you on a little learner from Qatar I've, there to I've give got you a little retainer? Mentions? Retainer coming my way soon. Right. You were at the Qatar it. Goodwood Festival sponsored by Qatar during the summer. Continue. <laughs> and uh, Amber Amber Gold won very very testing conditions. I mean, let's be honest. A few of these have been running and went well in testing conditions. But I was really taken by that. He's run poorly since, but the handicap has not wasted any time dropping him. And he's just one pound above that, the winning mark that day. And in what looks quite an open race at 12 to 1, I think he offers a bit of value in the each way market there. OK, I see your point, right? I do see your point. But I, one thing I will say, he's finished 16th of 17th, 18th of 22, 14th of 24, and 10th of 22 in his last four stars. So the handicappers had no option whatsoever but to drop him from 100 down to 96. But uh, yeah, this, huh. these are his terms and conditions. Oshie Murphy, sorry, not Oshie Murphy, Daniel Tudhope is booked. So uh, I do think uh, Abarama Gold is interesting. But this is Desperate Heroes race. He was really good the other day at Nottingham. He's really quick. And uh, I think Desperate Hero, who uh, will adore the ground, I think is going to be hard to beat here. Robbie, what do you like for our final race we're previewing on this week's postcast? Yeah, viewers might know it. I gave a little thumbs up when Johnny was talking about Abraham Gold. Um, I was also interested in him as well. Um, I mean, he's not really been running. But I know he's got a lot of zeros next to his name, but he's not been running terrible races in these in these contests. Mm. He's third of, third of 11 in his group at York last time. I just think that he's a, he's a six furlong horse. And... 
just stay in that extra furlong, five furlongs on heavy. I think he's gonna he's gonna relish that. Um, the, yeah, the handicapper for me is potentially dropped in quite quickly. He is only like Johnny says, he's only one pound higher than when winning the Stewart's Cup. That's a much deeper race than this. And these Omara horses can just bounce right back just like that. So at double figures, he's he makes plenty of appeal. But I respect what you're saying about Desperate Hero for sure. Okay, so it's two votes for Abarama Gold, 12 to 1, and it is Desperate Hero for me. So those are the races we're previewing on this week's racing postcast. But have you got any other fancies, lads? Robbie, we'll come to you for here first. Anything else on any of the cards, be it at Cheltenham, be it on the races we haven't covered at Doncaster, Newbury, maybe Kelso, maybe Galway. I'm expecting big things from you at Galway, Johnny Pearson, so you better have something. Robbie, anything you like? Nah, nah, not really, mate. Oh, I fancy no. Chelsea. I fancy Chelsea to, to stuff Brentford. I think we're going to be <laughs> we're going to be quite angry after what happened at Arsenal. I think you're going to see a big performance there. But in the what racing we, world, what are we talking about? Minus two? Should we be back in the minus two or something yeah, yeah, like that? For sure. Okay. M- okay. Mudrick, uh, Mudrick, anytime. Um, I, yeah, I think we've got quite a lot of uh, potential plays there, so I don't need to go back in. Okay, okay, Johnny, anything you like on the other cards or the under cards of the places uh, we previewed? No, not on Saturday. I mean, on Friday, I've been through Friday, and my mate Mozzie is coming over for Gavin Cromwell. He's odd zombie. He should win the the novice chase in the two ten on Friday. Okay, I'm going to tag... get. Sorry, go for it. And uh, tag man in the two forty five looks uh, looks an interesting one for Henry de Bromhead. For all that, Lucinda Russell's El Elefante could could prove to be very good in time. Okay, in the three oh seven at Galway on Saturday. Might not be terrific value, but Pearl of Fills was beaten last time for Gordon Elliott at Punches 10. And I did a stable during the paper this week. And he basically said he was beaten the last day. He won't be beaten the next day. That he was only half fit that day. He just blew up. I'd say Pearl of Fills is still a nice horse. And he goes in the 307 at Galway on Saturday. So all that's left to do now is reveal our naps of the weekend. So take it away, Johnny Pearson. The best well, bet that. of the return of Cheltenham is... My nap comes in the 225, and that'll be Lord Accord, uh, winner of the race last year, as said earlier, and hopefully he can get the job done again this year. So Lord Accord for Johnny Pearson in the 225 with Chelham. I'm going 35 minutes later, but we'll have one for Willie Mullins and Paul Town, and currently an 8-1 to shot. I did want to have Am I Right, but I couldn't because Johnny stole that race from me. Uh, Robbie Wilders, your nap of the day. Yes, I man. presume it's going to be in the opener, Chelham. I presume you're going to get us off to a terrific start. And I presume that 50 to 1 for the Queen Mother Champion Chase is going to be about 10 at about 20 past 1 on Saturday. That's, that's going to be part of my prediction, yeah. I was going to, I think you're going to see 33 to 1 quotes after. And then he's going to win again, and you're going to see 20 to 1 quotes. That's my bold long term prediction. So it has to be Haddock's Zobo, 115 at Cheltenham, but let's have it. Beautiful. There you go. Three of the four races at Cheltenham are covered in our nap. So maybe you might like a little tricksy there, right? Weekend plans, boys. Johnny, what's the plan for the weekend? Uh, not a lot, really. It's watch football, racing, and, and the rugby. We've got the World Cup final, of course. Uh, what I, think, I think New Zealand will, will get the better of South Africa. Robbie Wilders, what's the plan? Yeah, looking forward to it, mate. Going out for a curry with the boys tonight and uh, going home to celebrate my dad's birthday. Um, I'm a bit I'm a bit concerned. I've ordered him uh, an ice bar for his birthday. It's not arrived yet. I've ordered it to my flat in London. <laughs> rather than his you got your dad an ice bath for his birthday (laughs) yeah he's quite into sort of uh training much like myself actually i think he's going to really enjoy it but i'm it's Uh, it's looking a dumb decision not to order it to his house how are you getting it from london to kent no you got to blow it up but it's just more the concept that i'm going home tomorrow night okay so you got your dad an ice bath for his birthday yeah, I mean, it's kind of selfish because I want to use it as well. So it's, that's a, it's a gift that, that I can get stuff out of. That's a pretty cool present, isn't it? Hey. <laughs> hey. Does that not appeal to you, DJ and Ice Bob? I, I, I'm, I'm a chicken uh, SHIT when it comes to uh, stuff like that. But I did actually, I did the Paddy Power quiz in Ireland, right, where mm. it's like a quiz show in Ireland. And one of the things myself and Fran Berry had to do was get into an ice bath. And like oh, I, no. I swear to God, at the end you had to get in for like five minutes or something, something mad. It's hard work. And uh, I was dreading it the whole day. But I think when you're dreading something so badly, it doesn't actually turn out to be as bad as you think. And once you're in, it's grand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you get used to it. It's really, it's really good for you. A lot of health benefits. So, 
I couldn't put any uh, any viewers off getting an ice bath. Even a cold shower, that will sort you out as well. Okay, there you go. Well, uh, Mr. Wilders, if you're watching, enjoy your ice bath. Or we've just ruined the surprise, actually, if you're watching. He won't be watching. <laughs> he won't be watching, mate. He can't stand racing, so that's that's all good with us. Okay, okay. Hopefully, we haven't poured cold cold water on his birthday present. There's the end of the puns. So there you go. That's it for this week's racing postcast, brought to you by the Racing Post Members Club. I've been David Jennings. He's been Robbie Wilders. He's been Johnny Pearson. Thanks for watching. And your usual host, who's much better at this than me, uh, Sam Hart, will be back next week to preview all the action then. Until then, have a great weekend and enjoy the racing. <laughs>